First one. Can I attach one of these around your throat and pull on it to see how you like it? I hope you get cancer and die. All right, so recently I was going through our how to fit a prong collar article and making some improvements, adding some new images. One of the things that I wanted to do was film a video to dispel some of the myths surrounding prong collars. However, after reading the reviews, or not even the reviews, the comments on this article, I thought that maybe the best way to address or at least identify some of these myths was just to read the comments. So, without any further ado, here we go. Let's start seeing what some of our comments sound like and uh, we'll see how I react to them. First one. Can I attach one of these around your throat and pull on it to see how you like it? I hope you get cancer and die. Hmm, this is from David. Well, David, luckily I don't have cancer. Uh, I'm more than happy to put this around my neck and we'll demonstrate that here momentarily. Uh, you'll see how a prong collar actually works and that it does not hurt. And I would actually rather put a prong collar on and have someone give me a leash correction than have somebody give me a leash correction on a flat collar where I'm going to actually collapse and damage my trachea. As far as I, you hoping that I get cancer and die, this sets the mindset for how crazy these people are. I don't understand how this David can think that it's appropriate to tell someone that they should get cancer, but that they're not willing to use a training tool that is advocated for by many, many, many dog trainers. But uh, David, I'm glad to see that you say some things on the internet that you may not be able to, or may not be willing to say to my face. All right, my dad's gonna teach me how to walk politely on the leash, so I'll be the dog. We're gonna go out for a walk. As I get to the end of the leash, you can see that it started to tighten up. So he's not even putting a pop in it, he's just allowing the tension on the leash to tighten this up. Now, as I said earlier, this puts the pressure 360 degrees around my neck rather than just right in the front like a flat collar would. So I have pinching all the way around my neck. As soon as I yield to the leash or step back, right there, that pressure was released, the pinching came up. This allowed for perfect timing. So I hit the end, it tightens, I give a little bit, it's gone. Okay, on to our next comment. And this comment here is from John. And John writes, have you seen pictures online of dogs that have been in these collars? Google it. Anyone that loves dogs would not put these on. Okay, John. Well, let's get some things straight. First of all, John mentions pictures, plural. That's not really true. It's this picture, one picture. And as John mentions, Google it. I welcome you to Google it. This picture is horrifying, by the way. The size of the holes in this dog's neck, this is disgusting. This is negligent dog ownership. This is a horrible, horrible picture and it has been going around the internet for five to 10 years now and it is used as the number one reason that prong collars are supposedly bad. Now, let's look at this picture a little bit closer and you can see that the holes in the dog's neck are almost the size of a dime. This prong collar has been left on this dog for days, weeks, months way, way, way too long. A prong collar is not meant to be left on your dog 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a training collar. It's meant to go on when you train your dog or when you're taking your dog for a walk and then come back off. Now, I would equate this picture to leaving your socks on for a month. Leave your socks on for a month. Then look at how your feet look. They're gonna look disgusting. Probably something similar to the picture of the holes in this dog's neck. That does not mean that your, that your socks are evil torture devices. It means that you should have taken them off. You should have washed them. You should do general maintenance. Use the tools how they're meant to be used. Don't misuse tools and then say that it's the tool's fault. All right, the next comment that I'm going to read is from Dina. And Dina writes, only a person who has absolutely no idea about how dogs function and learn, no idea about there's no T in that, I'm assuming you meant about. Theory of learning and dog behavior can suggest the use of aversives and dangerous equipment such as this. You suck and abuse dogs. Okay, Dina. Well, if you wanna bring up learning theory 
and say that the use of prong collars means that I have no idea about learning theory, I would recommend that you go back to school and study up on learning theory. Specifically, operant condition, operant conditioning. Now, there are four quadrants to operant conditioning. Positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, and negative punishment. If you're not adding any consequences or any cause and effect, which is what operant conditioning is, which is what learning theory is, you're not fully utilizing the concept of learning theory. You're only using half of the tools at your disposal. The next comment comes from Peter. Peter says, to all of you who are trying to justify these collars, why has Amazon UK banned the selling of these? Because PETA and other so-called animal rights organizations have a lot of money, they have deep pockets, and they're pretty good at manipulating public opinion through misinformation campaigns. And I only need to ask you this, Peter, do you own a dog or a cat or a gecko or a goldfish? Because if you do, then PETA and these other, as I said, so-called animal rights organizations Consider you a slave owner. They have you in the same exact category as anybody that owns a dog, and they would petition for the banning of all animal ownership, right along with the banning of training tools. Our next comment uh, comes from Humane. This, whoever this is, didn't even want to attach their name to it. Uh, so Humane writes, maybe we should stick them on your misbehaving children too. Come on, stop treating your dogs like slaves and learn how to train them properly. Raising children and raising dogs is not the same thing. Don't put a leash and a collar, whether it's a flat collar, a prong collar, a slip collar. Your kids don't need collars. This one is from Emma. Emma writes in, animal abuse. For anyone who says it's not, try a little experiment of having a friend lead you around on a prong collar while pulling. Not only is this method cruel, it can also lead to long-term damage including scar tissue, spinal injuries, thyroid problems, and behavioral problems. Do your research. There are much better methods to end pulling. Okay, Emma, this is wrong on so many levels. Uh, first of all, you're about to see me do your little experiment, and my dad just came over here to the office, and I'm going to go ahead and throw the prong collar on, and he's going to teach me how to walk politely on the leash, so you'll see that in a minute. But first of all, let's address some of this other, the other things you're talking about here. So, oh, I skipped off of your comment. You write, prong collars, not only can lead to long-term damage. I would say the exact opposite. I would say that prong collars are more humane than a flat collar or a slip collar because they don't cause long-term damage. If your dog is pulling into a flat collar, that's putting pressure right here, right on the larynx, right in the middle of the dog's neck, this can collapse. This can cause permanent damage. If you're using a prong collar, it's pinching. It also is applying pressure 360 degrees all the way around the dog's neck by pinching rather than just that flat pressure right on the front. So a prong collar is not going to cause permanent damage. Letting your dog pull into a flat collar will cause, can cause permanent damage. Thyroid problems? I don't know, Emma, I guess you're gonna have to elaborate on that. I don't understand how a training collar could cause thyroid problems, but uh, if you're watching this, feel free to comment below and explain more. Spinal injuries, I would say the exact same thing. If you allow your dog to pull into a flat collar, at some point, they're gonna learn they can do that. They're gonna take off from a dead stop, they're gonna run, they're gonna hit the end of the leash, they're gonna whiplash back, and you're gonna have spinal problems. If you use a prong collar and teach your dog how to walk politely on the leash, that will never happen. Moving on, let's uh, do this little experiment now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a prong collar. We'll, uh, Take this off so you guys can see it a little better. And let's go ahead and put this on. I already sized this so I should have the proper fit. All right, so there we go. Prong collar's on. Turn it around so that we've got the, uh, the tab right here in the back. You can see that? I'm already 
giving myself some corrections. So now we've got my dad here. He's got a leash. Brand new Amish leash. <laughs> here you go. Would it, would it be okay if we started by showing how <laughs> not to use it? Let's do, let's do the not using it this way first, okay? What is the not using it way? What are you going to do here? It's going to hurt. All right, let's see. No, I ain't going <laughs> to do it. Do the, do the not use it way. So it's definitely, you can feel the pinching in my neck. Let's get a little close up. See, there's no holes. Nothing wrong with my neck after uh, that. There's a big hole over here. Oh, where? Where? Big holes? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So let's. Uh, right here. Here's the thing I probably about. You know, I did my first video in 1982, and back then I've redone that thing I don't know how many times. And I call prong collars power steering on dogs because they give somebody that's a small person uh, the ability to handle a large dog. And without a prong collar, a lot of those dogs are going to end up going to the rescue organizations. They're going to end up being put down because of people like Jeff just read these, these comments on. They're, maybe they're well-intentioned people. They're not very intelligent. They're well-intentioned, but they have no experience training dogs. If they had any experience training dogs, they wouldn't write this stupid garbage that they're writing. That also brings up another really good point of something that our good friend Tyler Mudo uh, explained to me, or the way that he worded it, and talking about negligence. And this was in a conversation regarding banning of specific training tools. And the real problem here is negligence. And when posed the question, what do you consider negligence to be? Tyler had the best answer I could have ever imagined. And Tyler said that negligence is when people are unwilling to utilize a training tool on a problem dog yet they're more than happy to tell that dog's owners that this dog is untrainable and they should put him down. So if you're one of these purely positive people that don't believe in prong collars, but you're out there advocating for dangerous dogs to be put to sleep because you're not willing to put a prong collar on them and teach them some manners, that's negligence. And that is animal abuse. Okay. What do you want to well, give me one more leash pop just so that we can uh, get a kind of close up here and show them what it is and then we'll move out of the studio and go over, oop, <laughs> there it was. Okay, all right, so I feel this. I would definitely respond and listen, but it's not painful. Now let's go over into the training room over here and uh, I'll walk out to the end of the leash. All right, my dad's gonna teach me how to walk politely on the leash, so I'll be the dog. We're gonna go out for a walk as I get to the end of the leash, you can see that it started to tighten up. So he's not even putting a pop in it, he's just allowing the tension on the leash to tighten this up. Now, as I said earlier, this puts the pressure 360 degrees around my neck rather than just right in the front like a flat collar would. So I have pinching all the way around my neck. As soon as I yield to the leash or step back, right there, that pressure was released, the pinching came up, this allowed for perfect timing. So I hit the end, it tightens, I give a little bit, it's gone. This takes all the timing, all the training off of the handler and into the training tool.